So with the Lady Raiden's case file event in full swing over here on the any version of the game, I finally get to talk about one of my favorite servants to use, that being the Pretender class single target arts unit, Hephaestin. And if you're wondering why I'm like so excited to talk about this unit, there's just something about units that just have good strong skills and have this wide applicability that I love using. You know, it's the same thing for Melusine as a single target arts unit where yeah, sure, she's gonna lose out to someone who has this big chaotic power mod or this big divine power mod, whatever have you, but there's just something about bringing out old reliable that's gonna be good in basically every single situation. And Hephaestin has that in spades, whether you wanna use her as, say, a single target farmer in some odd 90 plus or 90 plus plus content that we're gonna be getting, which keep in mind, if you're going 90 plus plus, you are probably gonna wanna go for higher NP copies, go figure, because no power mods is really not going to allow her to keep up with the other single targets that do have power mods but again just kind of a forewarning but even if you want to use her as say a boss killing unit or if you want to bring her to stuff like the tower events or the grail front stuff along those lines she's just good in a lot of those different scenarios as she just has a very solid kit and obviously she's missing some things that i would have you know liked they would have given her stuff like real survivability and stuff along those lines but again she's an arts unit so the things that she's lacking are things that castoria provides for her i mean even say her np gain buff it's good but it only lasts one turn but castoria will give her all the np gain and the arts buff she could ever want on her second and third skill so this is going to be like half a review and half of an evaluation because I do have a lot of experience in using Hephaestin. I use her pretty frequently and I am really having to resist over here on the NA version of the game to go in and summon for her because we are going to get a four star ticket. I'm probably just going to pick her up with that. I want to save all my Saint Quartz for like Ruler Moriarty, Krimhild, the Summer Event especially, but man, the temptation is very strong. But if you enjoy this type of content, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's start just diving right into this, starting off with our hits. So I guess one of the first main things we got to talk about for some of my newer players is Hephaestin being a Pretender class, because this is still a little new over here on the NA version of the game. I mean, we do have Oberon, but I don't even think a lot of people are using him as like an offensive servant. You're probably more using him as a plug suitor for your buster farming. And so Hephaestin might be your actual first real Pretender DPS servant, right? And so Pretenders are inverse Alter Ego. So Alter Egos, you know, are bad against the knight classes but good against the cavalry classes so that's bad against saber archers lancers but good against riders assassins and casters and obviously everybody can beat up berserkers and so she is going to be the opposite of that but that's also not entirely true because she has a specific skill to kind of shore up one of those weaknesses but just kind of make sure you're keeping that in mind that she is going to be good against what your alter egos are not she's inverse class advantage she's good against the knight classes but then, as an Arch DPS, they just gave her a very solid and balanced kit. Nothing here really screams a broken, you must summon this servant, you know? It's just good hits that aren't particularly broken, but they're not bad. You know, 0.59% NP gain is not going to be all that great, but it's also not all that bad with three hit arts cards, especially considering some of her passives that I want to show where, you know, she has a solid enough 12% crit damage buff. Again, nothing too crazy, but, you know, it'll help her crits get a little bit more bite. What I do find to be actually notable about her is that passive 12% arts buff and that passive 10% NP damage buff, because that is going to be very nice in making her damage a little bit higher than what you might think it would be when you're just looking at her skills, because it makes her arts buff a little bit bigger, and it makes the NP damage buff that she has on her NP on the overcharge effect a little bit bigger as well. So overall, just a very solid start if you're looking at this as an art single target DPS unit. But let's start moving into some of the skills so we can really find out what she does. So starting off with the first skill over here, it's just, you know, you would think generic good stuff. You know, 30% arts, 30% buster really is 42% arts because of her passive effect, which is very close to being a free mana burst which is usually going to be your 50 percent card buff so that's very good her refund is going to be very strong with her arts cards and it's also going to increase the damage of those arts cards pretty significantly but here's the real kicker they didn't have to do this but they gave her essentially normal class advantage against casters this is not a power mod it's just normal advantage against casters both offensively and defensively because 
you know, again, she's mimicking Iskandar, right? So that's a rider. So they gave her the class advantage against casters. So that weakness of the pretender class, that's kind of mitigated a little bit because sure, she still really can't fight assassins or riders, but she can still fight casters. So really she's getting more than what your standard pretender or your standard alter ego would get because they kind of snuck that in on there. And that's very, very useful. You know, some fights that you wouldn't be able to bring her to. I mean, one of the ones that I was showing earlier was the really big 1 million, you know, Liz caster from the Bleached Earth over on the JP version of the game. She normally wouldn't be able to do that. In fact, she really wouldn't be good for any of those 1 million HP fights because if I'm remembering correctly, the only three we have are a rider, a caster, and an alter ego. And funny enough, pretenders are not good into alter egos, but this at least lets her be useful against that, which I know is not the craziest thing. You could probably take that out without, you know, using a feist and hot take, but it is just nice that it opens up a door for her usability and she can actually take one of those on, which I really do like. Then we move over to her second skill. I mean, there's really no easy way to sugarcoat this. A 120% battery, go figure, is really good. Especially if you're more stripped for materials, you don't even have to go for really leveling this skill up at all. If you have a solid, you know, 50% starting charge CE and you're really strapped for materials, you can't really afford to give her the dust or the shells or the eggs because she does need 12 eggs. So I guess if you're really hurting for that, you don't have to go all the way on it. And it's still going to at bare minimum be a 60% battery that goes all the way up to 120, which can be very, very useful. It does also allow her to kind of get into overcharge levels, which is good as her overcharge on her NP is NP damage. So if you can get her to starting at 80%, fire that. She gets 10% extra NP damage just from the overcharge alone. That can be useful in some scenarios if you're planning for it. But there's really not a lot to say about it because it's just a really big battery, which go figure. I don't think people need me to explain why big battery is big good. So moving over to a third skill, this is also one that I think is kind of interesting. The taunt is very nice because it can get the pressure off of, say, your Castorias, your Tamamos, even your Lady Avalons, as you'll see me use later on in the video when I bring her to go fight Kiara. That can be very nice on getting some of the heat away from some of the enemies, but also keep in mind some enemies do have AoE attacks, so it's not always going to work against some of those larger enemies that can hit all three of your party members. But it can be nice, especially if maybe you're trying to bank on the whole NP gain thing, which I'm imagining they were trying to do. Like, this seems like it's supposed to kind of be a Gareth skill where you taunt everybody, give yourself some pretty good defense at 50%, and then you give yourself solid 30% NP gain, and now you're on a hit attacks are going to give you a lot more NP back, but I like to use this for whatever I need at the time. Do I want to keep the heat off of one of my, you know, supports? I'll use it for that. Do I just need to be a little beefy to survive the next turn? I'll give her the 50% defense. Or am I going to be doing like an arch chain with the NP and I want to make sure that I just massively refund my arts back to make sure that I can get a next NP on the following turn? I might use it for the NP gain skill. The absorbing party curses to self really, uh, while it is a demerit, is probably not going to come up all that often. So don't really worry about that unless they make some really insane Van Gogh challenge quest, which I guess just don't bring Hephaestus in that. I guess bring just somebody else. But all in all, all of these skills are very good. You can see why I call her a generically good servant. And I guess let's just skip to the NP because this will make even more sense when we get over there. Her NP doesn't do anything super nifty. It just gives, you know, 10% NP that procs first. That's nice. It's multiplicative with your other buffs. And then it lowers the buster and arts of the enemy by 10% for three turns to kind of give you that little bit of extra damage on subsequent NPs. But this is what I mean by a generically good servant. She doesn't do anything better than anybody else. She's just really good in a lot of ways. In some ways, you could kind of view her as a four-star new and improved version of someone like Medea and the fact that they can kind of spam their NP. They have really large batteries. It's just Hephaestin is more up to date, so she actually can do real damage. And speaking of that damage, I think I just showed the NP damage chart, or at least it should have flashed up there. It might look like she's really low, like she's very low on the damage chart, but that's a little disingenuous because what these NP damage charts don't show you is your subsequent NPs. And so I went ahead and calculated what it would look like on your third and final NP, because again, in an art setup, it is not hard to spam three NPs back to back to back. And to show you guys what it would look like if she's hitting somebody with a 30% arts down, her damage goes from kind of really solid to up to that 46,000 range, which is putting her around like Lancer Lee Swin, Emiya Alter, the Nero Bride. 
She's starting to really get up there with damage as you start to stack that arts down on the enemy. It's not nothing. She will start to do some very, very strong damage. I really wish it procced first, but then understandably, she might be a little too generally applicable and that might invalidate some other servants. And with them putting out Krimhild, you know, later on in the year, they obviously didn't want of Feisten to take all of the spotlight, but I just think she's a very strong servant. If you're going on the banner specifically for Hephaestion and not even for Reigns, I think that is an excellent idea. You know, just make sure there's not another servant coming out, like say Bazette that's right around the corner, or maybe you want to summon on the Gilgamesh banner for the battle in New York. You know, just kind of make sure that there's not another banner that you're really wanted to summon on. But if you really want to go for Hephaestion and you don't want to wait for the four star ticket, and maybe you do want like NP2, 3, 4, 5, you know, you're going to max this servant out and use them a lot. That's not a bad option. I mean, I used NP1 Hephaestion for the longest time over on JP. And when I finally got the second copy, I did notice a really big difference, but not enough that, I, you know, I wasn't using Hephaestion originally. Like, I would still break her out and use her whenever I could, and she's just so good in all the different game modes. Like, yeah, sometimes her not having a power mod can have her lose out to people that do have power mods. I mean, the aforementioned Nero Bride has a Sky Attribute power mod if you want to use her as a DPS. So, yeah, she will beat you out if you're going to use her in that scenario where you have Sky Attribute. But it is just nice sometimes to have a guy that has a big battery good buffs that are three turn and then a little bit of utility on that third skill and then it has ramping up damage depending on how many times you fire the NP. She's just a very very strong servant that I enjoy using and it's also a great time to try to get her because she's on raid up with Reigns so even if you don't get Hephaestion and you end up walking away with Reigns like that's not even an L either. You're getting basically waiver number two and then Hephaestion is on raid up. It's a very very good banner to go for. And so I can completely understand if you want to go summon for it because Hephaestion has a solid A rating for me. I don't think I can give her much higher than that because, again, she is missing those small bells and whistles that really push a lot of the A to A+, plus, those S tier servants, you know, those power mods, maybe that survivability for themselves, extra team support that maybe she could be having. You know, those are what kind of those S tier guys are having, but she's lacking a little bit of that, but still not bad. I mean, an A is an A. You ever been mad when you got an A on a test? Bro, I, as a C's get degrees type of guy, you know, I'm perfectly happy getting an A on my exam. So I think Hephaestion getting an A is very, very strong for her. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'd like to know where you would rate her personally, considering you can kind of just use her wherever. She's just going to be solid in any game mode. But I'll stop rambling. Let me know in the comments down below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace late guys.